A quick note about the Gospel. It speaks of the Pharisees and the high priests, lengthening their phylacteries and their tassels. The Jewish men of faith, those who are conservative and those who are We'll just call them the conservatives because that takes care of three parts. They will wear a shirt underneath their clothing that is for religious purposes and that has little ties on it, tassels. Lengthening your tassels makes them show under your clothes and that is very ostentatious. Your faith is supposed to be private, having it show to the world is something that is not done, except for by those who are very proud. Phylacteries are little boxes, actual boxes about three inches by one inch, that are prayer boxes. And you tie them to your forehead, you tie them to your shoulder, um, sitting atop your shoulder, or atop your arm, atop your wrist, I've seen them atop the sh um, at the elbow, and also, um, I believe I've seen them on the leg, like at the knee, at the joint. If you lengthen your phylactery, then it does not cause you any discomfort to have the phylactery attached to your body. They're supposed to cause discomfort. For that reminds you that the phylactery is there. That reminds you, I have a reason to pray. I have a reason to be prayerful. Many who go to the Wailing Wall will have phylacteries tied all over themselves because that is because of what they are praying for. Okay? On to the lesson of the Queenship of Mary. With the certainty of faith, we know that Jesus Christ is King in the full, literal, and absolute sense of the word, for he is true God and man. This does not, however, prevent Mary from sharing his royal prerogatives, though in a limited and analogous manner, for she is the mother of Christ, and Christ is God and she shared in the work of the Divine Redeemer, in his struggles against enemies, and in the triumph he won over them all. From this union with Christ the King, she assuredly obtained so eminent a status that she stands high above all created things, and upon this same union with Christ is based that royal privilege, enabling her to distribute the treasures of the kingdom of the Divine Redeemer. And lastly, this same union with Christ is the found fountain of the inexhaustible efficacy of her motherly intercession in the presence of the Son and the Father. Without doubt, then, does our Holy Virgin possess a dignity that far transcends all other creatures. In the eyes of her Son, she takes precedence over everyone else. In order to help us understand the preeminence that the Mother of God enjoys over all creation, it would help to remember that from the first moment of her conception, the Holy Virgin was filled with such a plenitude of grace as to surpass the graces enhancing all other saints. Remember what our Pope Pius IX, of blessed memory, wrote in his bull Ineffably, ineffablis deus in creation of this memorial. Quote, More than all the angels and all the saints has God ineffable freely endowed Mary with the fullness of the heavenly gifts that abound in the divine treasury. And she, preserving herself ever immaculately clean from the slightest taint of sin, attained a fullness of innocence and holiness so great as to be unthinkable apart from God himself, 
a fullness that no one other than God will ever possess. Spurred on by piety and faith, may we glory in being subject to the rule of Vir the Virgin Mary of God. She bears the royal scepter in her hand, while her heart is ever aflame with mother love. Mary's queenship has roots in scripture. At the Annunciation, Gabriel announced that Mary's son would receive the throne of David and rule forever. At the Visitation, Elizabeth calls Mary mother of my Lord. As in all the mysteries of Mary's life, she is closely associated with Jesus. Her queenship is a share in Jesus' kingship. We can also recall that in the Old Testament, the mother of the king has great influence in court. In the fourth century, St. Ephraim called Mary Lady and Queen. Later church fathers and doctors continued to use the title. Hymns of the 11th and 13th centuries address Mary as Queen. Hail Holy Queen, Hail Queen of Heaven, and Queen of Heaven. The Dominican Rosary and the Franciscan Crown, as well as numerous invocations in Mary's litany, celebrate her queenship. This feast is a logical follow-up to the Assumption, and it is now celebrated on the octave day of that feast. A Biblical Reflection As St. Paul suggests in Romans chapter 8, God has predestined human beings from all eternity to share the image of his Son. All the more was Mary predestined to be the mother of Jesus. As Jesus was to be king of all creation, Mary, in dependence on Jesus, was to be the queen. All other titles to queenship derive from this eternal intention of God. As Jesus exercised his kingship on earth by serving his father and his fellow human beings, so did Mary exercise her queenship. As the glorified Jesus remains with us as our king till the end of time, so does Mary, who was assumed into heaven and crowned queen of heaven and earth. Prayer of the Day O Mary, Immaculate Queen, look down upon this distressed and suffering world. You know our misery and our weakness. You who are our mother, saving us in the hour of peril. Have compassion on us in these days of great and heavy trial. Jesus has confided to you the treasure of his grace. And through you, he wills to grant us pardon and mercy. In these hours of anguish, therefore, your children come to you as their hope. We recognize your queenship and ardently desire your triumph. We need a mother and a mother's heart. You are for us the luminous dawn which dissipates our darkness and points out the way to life. In your clemency, obtain for us the courage and the confidence of which we have such need. Most holy and adorable Trinity, you who did crown with glory in heaven the Blessed Virgin Mother, Mary, Mother of the Saviour, Grant that all her children on earth may acknowledge her as their sovereign queen, that all hearts, homes, and nations may recognize her rights as mother and as queen. Amen. Mary, Immaculate Queen, triumph and reign. Amen.